Hello, everyone, and welcome to your Daily Detroit for Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. I am Jer Stays, coming to you from the Daily Detroit studio at Tech Town. And across the table from me, I'm always glad to see him. How are you, Fletcher Sharp? I'm all right. Monday was long, so here's the hoping Tuesday is not. I mean, I know the hours are the same, but like it doesn't feel as long. Do you know what? I think I caught some sun because I was out covering this news story and I looked in the car and it was like 70 degrees because, you know, it's insane. I feel like we've just turned winter off. Yeah, I went out for a walk yesterday and was wearing just like a light hoodie and I got back and my neighbor's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, huh? And I happened to put my hand on my head and I'm like, I'm pouring sweat. Like I didn't, need, <laughs> I didn't need to do this. And like now I, she's like, are you okay? And I'm like, yeah, I just thought it was going to be colder. She's like, don't you have a phone? And I was like, have a nice day, Cheryl. Like I don't, <laughs> I'm not doing this with you. I think Cheryl's just trying to look out for you. Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> well, uh, I uh, had to, uh, Head back to the house and actually grab some shorts before we hopped in and recorded because it's been so warm because I was out there for the uh, demolition of the Packard plant. Three of the final pieces are coming down, Fletcher. I know why it should have happened before, but like it should have happened before if it was going to happen. But like I feel like so many different feelings. Let them out, Fletcher. I want to hear them. I'm glad it's happening, but also like it. this should have happened already. And also I'm sad that like it couldn't be maintained, but like I understand why it couldn't be maintained to a degree. And just, you know, it's like Michael Irvin said, like, we're losing recipes. Yeah, of course, throughout my lifetime, like, it's never been active. Like, I can't recall something actually happening there that wasn't. There's, like, one little section for a while. Yeah, that wasn't, like, come, let's go do some at the Packard plant. It's, like, meet up by here. It was, like, a nice figurehead to know where to go. To see it actually just about to be gone is kind of, you know, bittersweet. Like, you understand why, but it's also, like, dang. I mean, this is kind of the issue that we're having with a bunch of Detroit buildings that the intervention on the Packard plant should have happened decades ago, you know, and it could have been awesome lofts or a ton of other things. But we just were not thinking like that in the the 90s and the 2000s. And then there was that time that Fernando Palazuelo owned it where, you know, and I actually did that reporting back uh, with uh, Detroit Public Television a while ago where he didn't pay any of his bills on it. So, you know, chunks of it fell back to the city. To me, it's something that I feel like it's always been part of Detroit. They're actually going to be saving a portion of it near Grand Boulevard uh, to kind of like rehab it as part of any kind of deal. But yeah, this thing couldn't come down for a while because frankly, the city just didn't have the money. Uh, In this press conference, it was mentioned, I think, four times that it was ARPA money and Joe Biden that helped get this thing funded. I mean, I, I get that. And like, I understand. But even still, like, this is like a so low priority thing. But like. Whenever you watch TV shows and they're like, this is supposed to take place in whatever city, like you want to see things from the city and like seeing the Packard plant and like that very terrible show, Low Winter Sun, which was, I like that they were trying to film in Detroit, but like you have two British people playing like Michiganders who are like arguing over which Coney and it's like, ooh, they're just calling them hot dogs and we don't do that here. It didn't hit the same way Detroiters did. To see like the Packard plant in the background or like, you know show I really didn't like, but understood Detroit 187 and see other parts of the city that are like, are there, that are no longer there anymore. It's like, it's such an indelible, like, mark left, almost in a way, for different reasons, like Zug Island, where like, if that ever gets taken care of, which I don't think it ever will. Because I think it's still an active industrial site. I really feel like if you walk there without a suit, like your skin will just melt. That has not been cleared by our legal department. That is just a feeling and opinion. Yes. Mine. (laughs) But like, if they ever take care of that, it'll be like, all right, we can breathe. But also like, dang, I miss that. So like while the Packard plant wasn't like active, active, it's still like a thing that you can reference and say, look, this is this thing. It's a history thing. So for it to just not be there, like I'm struggling for words for like the first time in a while. Just it's sad. It's weird to see it actually going. Because it's just been a part of our wallpaper for so long, especially as Eastsiders. Yeah, no, of course. Like, that's the part that, like, when they got rid of Eastland Mall, they're like, they're going to get rid of Eastland. You're like, okay, sure. Then you watch it get, like, imploded, and you're like, oh, man, like, it's really gone. And then you go back, and it's like, it's it's not there. (laughs) It's not there. You're just kind of, like, trying to piece together, like, What happens now? Like, of course, obviously life goes forward, but like, it's just been such a part of the fabric of a Detroiter, especially one who uh, resides in the East, but like, got to step forward, I guess. People will want to know what's uh, happening next, and uh, I can share that. So apparently, 
there was no developer interest in this thing until the plant came down. All developers, they want to have a brownfield site. The ceilings were too low for modern industrial use and too high for lofts and things like that. So now that it's going to be fully demolished, the city is taking it out. And the mayor, Mike Duggan, says that there are a number of auto suppliers interested in the spot, especially because it's just across the freeway from Factory Zero for General Motors. Any plan has to save part of the facade by Grand Boulevard. If you drive by and you'll be able to see it in our Daily Detroit Minute video, it'll be the parts that actually have like a plastic window over them. Those are the areas that are going to be saved. Uh, so yeah, I mean, something hopefully will happen there. It won't just be like more urban prairie. I know one resident spoke during it and talked about how they, you know, like it to be housing or something like that. But that's a real difficult kind of corner to put that on. I mean, you're telling me I can't have a super high ceiling loft? Like, I can't legally, they'll say no? Like, I have to be zoned for that? I don't, I'm not saying legally. It just, it didn't seem to make sense for the numbers. Man, I, I'd love a Packard plant loft. Like, if it's like an actual, not like now. Like, I don't want it to be now or like last week. Well, at this stage, I mean, you'll have like somebody's old boat that they threw out next to it. I mean, hey, you got cover. <laughs> I... Am hopeful something good will come out of it, regardless of what it is. But just I'm trying to move past like the fact that it's gone, and like I'm still just stuck on that. I can't help but think it's a missed opportunity. That's really it. And I know like with a lot of places that are like held on to for, but like you see the train station, people are like that should be gone. It should be gone. And like they're starting to do something with it now, to where it's like, all right, it's coming back. We can do this. I know definitely when the sports teams are playing well, like the Lions, they display lights across the front. It's opening this summer, right? right. Like it's now, it's it's back, and you want to think like this could happen with other things, but obviously it takes a tremendous amount of patience and will, and obviously money. I mean, we're talking like a billion dollars. Yeah, and it's not a something you can just crowdsource. Uh, if you can, like. You know what? If they can crowdsource a billion dollars, patreon.com slash daily Detroit. Yeah, we need to become friends real quick. <laughs> you think like this is something that could come back. Like it, if it's actually given the time and effort, like other things, it could come back. And just the fact that it's not as like, dang, like the, they didn't. Did you notice another one coming down? The uh, Hannon Memorial YMCA over there on Jefferson? Really? Yeah, that one over by that one church over by Sinbad's. That oh, thing's man. coming down too. Oh, man, we really are losing recipes. Oh. So you like that one? I'm going to be sad. It wasn't all that long ago if you lived in the city that you could go in that place. That's why I'm going to be sad. Oh, so you've been in there? Like once, not okay. recently, but the things that you grow, whether you even like use them at all, but just the things that you've just known, like, oh, this building or this building or this place, it's like, yeah, maybe I don't go there frequently. Maybe it's not one of my favorite places, but it's somewhere that I know and I know of. I can use it as a reference point or just- It's tall. It's like a landmark right. when you're going down Jefferson. Right. Like you see a, a photo or something and someone's like, what's this? And you can just explain it to someone from out of town. So like to see that those things are just gone now, it, it's crazy. I mean, I, again, time- moves forward uh, and nothing can, you know, stop that. But just even still, wow, I did not know that. That's breaking news for me. All right, well, let's get into a little bit of uh, sports change gears here. Spring training has started for the Tigers, and apparently it's starting off in a pretty good way. I want to start with a quote here. Outfielder Riley Green, quote, the vibes are super high in the clubhouse. Guys are staying for hours after the games, just chopping it up in the locker room. And that X factor, man, I know that you're always looking for that. It's easier to play better ball regardless of the sport when, like, you actually like the people you're around. You can do it if you don't like them. Like, we saw Shaq and Kobe, like, do some great things with the Lakers, and they weren't necessarily fond of each other during some of those times. But, like, it's a lot easier for a unit that's not as supremely talented as them to play well and do some good things when they like each other. That's like the first step for me. So to see that, especially for a young team, is great. I know spring training doesn't necessarily mean like you're going to go win the pennant, but like it's a good look at how some of your starters are, how a lot of your farm teams are to see like what's going to happen for the next season. So if they can contribute that way, if someone gets hurt, they need to pull someone up from AAA, AA, Maybe they don't feel as nervous like we're losing such and such. And it gives some of those players who like start like Akil Badu, who was a household name. Everyone loved him and then figured out can't hit a breaking ball. I mean, he has such a fun name to say, too. He does. But like they figured out, like, give him something off and he's definitely not going to hit it. So like it gives him a chance to like, you know, put his name out there to see if he can maybe still be on the first day roster, maybe even start. 
I've never seen a spring training game because they're obviously most of them are in Lakeland, but like it's good. You're excited for the season to a degree. I'm not going to say that they're going to come out here and, you know, win the division. I don't know, though. This division still doesn't look that strong. Even still, I need to see the end of spring training, see who they have, maybe get like a game or two under their belt before I'm going to jump on that bandwagon because there's a lot to unpack there before we get there. Now, maybe this is just an emotional reaction, but with all of this warm weather, I'm feeling far more into baseball this year like looking at the phone yesterday it was 70 degrees i was like you know what comerica park seems like a fine place to be because apparently we've deleted winter uh this could be quite a year for baseball yeah the groundhog didn't see a shadow and like that doesn't matter it's gonna be cold and then like two days later it was 65 55 and i'm like all right then it hit 28 and i was like yeah see i told you it doesn't matter and from that point forward it's been (laughs) At the lowest, like, 40 and at the highest, we had the warmest day in February ever in history. Mm -hmm. So, like, that makes me scared for the summer. Well, I was uh, reading Bridge, Michigan, and there was a report. I actually want to get the author on there that we will have winter, like, Charlotte, North Carolina by 2050. Like, we are on the way to having a climate zone that's the same as North oh, Carolina. Oh, no. You've got a feeling about that. That does not leave me with the warm and fuzzies that it would for everybody else. I posted that out there on social media. A lot of people were like, yeah, I'm not sure I care about global warming. Okay. Huh. As someone who's from Michigan who went down to Louisiana for a summer to go run track and there was like a day where it was like 100 degrees with like 90% humidity. And I just was like, I'm not, obviously we're not going to go to practice. And I got a call half an hour in like, where are you? You're late. And I was like, oh, they're crazy. No. So yeah, you don't think you care about global warming until you have to live in that. And then it's like, oh, this is terrible. And like some people escape the warm by coming here. If you're trying to escape the warm when it's here, where do you go now? Like where The UP. This could be the UP's big moment. And the, even the UP, it's going to probably hit like 50 and they're going to be like, ooh, it's time to break out, you know, the good snowshoes. That's great and all that it's warm now. I'm a little worried for the future. But in terms of Tigers baseball, the thing I like about baseball is – even if the team is bad, if the weather is nice, it's still fun to go to the stadium because there's just you can go there and sit. And yeah, while your team's getting shelled 17 nothing, they got the right fielder in throwing pitches. You get a respectable priced hot dog, maybe a beverage, uh, and you get to just sit there and just exist. And if the Tigers are good, then it'll be an even better experience because while you're getting all that done, they'll be the ones winning. And there's going to be a brand new scoreboard, so I'm pretty excited about that. Definitely. The thing I like about their scoreboards, too, is if you can't see the field, you can look up and it kind of tracks it like the, like the TV feed. So a better one would be great, too. All right. Before we go, let's talk about Dylan Larkin. He's going to be out for two weeks for the Red Wings. And the Red Wings are in this playoff chase. Losing Dylan isn't the best news for the club, but I think it's surmountable. Yeah, I mean, he leads them in goals, and you never really want to lose your top goal scorer, but they do have one of the most fearsome offenses in the entire NHL. They're sixth overall in goal score of 216, which is the reason why they've been winning a lot of games. I think they've maybe only won, like, six games this season where they didn't score four or more goals, which is insane to think about because there's been games where, like, they've scored three, four goals and still lost because they have also one of the worst defenses in the league, which, you know, comes down to keeper play. That's something they're going to have to figure out if they want to make a deep run in the playoffs. But losing him is not – last year would have been, like, crippling. It would have been very bad. But they have Debrinkit. They have Kane, who I guess I'll have to soften him a little bit because he is, he's scoring against the Blackhawks and celebrating. Like, I know a lot of people score against their former teams, and they're like, let's be muted. But he scores a game-winning goal, and he's like – hype about it in Chicago. So I'm like, all right, I can respect that. You're turning over the leaf of you're no longer Blackhawks sweetheart. You're now Red Wings player. So they have those two players scoring goals. Their defense can hold uh, third lines a little shaky. But I mean, who's, I guess, isn't at this point. They can hold on for two weeks. I think they still probably won't catch Toronto for the top three in their division, but I think they'll hold on to the wild cards. I don't see them losing ground. They have six points to lose, and I think that they're probably good right there. Maybe they might drop to the second wild card at the worst, but I don't see them slipping out of that spot. It's crazy to think, but with this warm weather, it might be time for a trip to LCA. A little chill in there. That'd be the only time it'd be perfect. Any other temperature, and it's just too cold. I've gone there for a game, and I was like, I know hockey arenas are supposed to be cold, but like, come on, man. So Fletcher likes it neither too hot or too cold. At least at a hockey arena, when it's too cold, it's supposed to be too cold. But like when it's supposed to be February in Michigan, it's supposed to be like 35 at the highest 
or like 19 with like sleet the size of like quarters, not 65 degrees shorts weather. And you're just like, ah, man, if this is hot now, like come, come June, like we're gonna have to just be taking off our skin and walking around. It's just bones. It's gonna be too hot. <laughs> Fletcher Sharp, so good to talk with you. Of course. Thanks for having me. Of course. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. Uh, you didn't get a chance to go out there, but uh, will you promise the people you will make it to the Davin Panda? Yeah, I I so meant to do it. I meant to do it this last week, but just I. Do I need to text you? No, it just I had, you know, as some people might know, I also walk and take care of dogs in my spare time. So, like, just I had some clients that were just going a little nutty. And I got home and was like, I need to go out and get something to eat. And then my partner is like, we have groceries. And I was like, you're right. But also I should, she's like, no, we have groceries. And I was like, okay, we have groceries. Okay, that means I have to text you so I can play the boss card. You just got to text her and be like, this is for work. I have to eat the shawarma. It's for work. Do you want me to get yelled at at work? Here's the text right here. Jer says I have to have a shawarma. I have to have a shawarma and a cheeseburger (laughs) and tacos. If I don't, I might not have a spot when I come back the next week. Do you want to do that to me? And I got to hit her with the eyes so she knows that, like, you know, I'm for real. <laughs> but, you yeah, know, I really do plan to get out there soon. From when I've stopped in the gas station next to it, like, there's been a few people in there. Obviously, some people are still trying to figure out exactly what a dab and panda and a sombrero is. Right. It looks like people are enjoying their food. So that gives me hope that it's the right spot for me. All right. Well, with that, I am Jer Stays. Thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to drop five stars on your favorite podcast app for us. Send your feedback, dailydetroit at gmail.com. We've got some fun stuff coming up for, well, the spring. Is it spring now? Do we call it spring now? What are we doing? It's been spring for like a week and a half for me. All right. right. Well, thank you so much for listening. Remember that you are somebody, and we'll see you around Detroit.